Hello and welcome to the Perkin Elmer 2020 Mining Workshop Series. My name's Peter Dickinson, I'm a Product Specialist with Perkin Elmer. And in this presentation, I'll discuss the analysis of copper gold ore using the RVO200 ICP OES. I'll cover some key features and benefits of the RVO200, and then the analysis of copper gold ore, including the instrument setup, sample digestion, method details, and the analysis of some certified reference materials. For many laboratories, finding a bench space for new instrumentation can be challenging. The RVO200 has been designed with this in mind. One of its key features is its small footprint. It's only 65 centimetres wide, saving laboratory space. One of the main costs of operating an ICP is the argon that's used for generating the plasma. And on the RVO200, a patented flat plate plasma system is used, which can help reduce these costs. The plasma can operate at lower argon gas flows, as low as eight litres per minute, and that's including at 1500 watts, so what's considered robust plasma conditions. And this compares to other ICPs which require between 12 and 15 litres per minute for the plasma gas flow. The flat plate plasma uses two aluminium induction plates rather than a traditional copper coil. And the benefit of this is that the plates require no water cooling and are maintenance free. And the RBO200 also uses what's called plasma shear to remove the plasma tail. And this uses compressed air compared to other ICPs, which can use up to six litres per minute of argon flowing through either a cone or a snout to remove the plasma tail. The RBO200 has a dual view plasma. And this has actually been a Perkinoma feature on ICP OES for over 20 years. On the new instrument, the plasma is in a vertical orientation, which provides better matrix tolerance for some applications. It has radial view, which provides a higher linear dynamic range and is typically used for high matrix elements, and axial view, which provides lower detection limits and is used typically for trace elements. And we have the ability in the software to measure both modes in the same method. The RBO200 has a unique double monochromator optical design with a CCD detector. And this is a compact system with high light throughput and provides excellent sensitivity and detection limits. You'll see in the diagram below, there's a prism and a grating, and they, is, they determine what wavelength is focused onto the detector. And it's able to move the prism and the grating quickly in less than two seconds when changing wavelengths. It also has a system called dynamic wavelength stabilization. You'll see in the diagram below, there's a neon lamp. This introduces a neon reference beam into the light path at the intermediate slit. And the neon reference beam is measured continuously by the detector, correcting for any spectral drift. And this provides excellent wavelength accuracy. And it's also a reason why on the RBO200 that the spectrometer doesn't require to be thermally stabilized. It also has a charge couple device or CCD detector, which is actually separated into two regions. The bottom part of the detector is where it measures the analyte emission, and the top part of the detector is where it's measuring the neon reference beam. And the CCD detector also provides simultaneous background measurement, which is important for good accuracy and precision. And one of the other key benefits of the RBO200 is it can be completely shut down when not being used. So we can switch the plasma off, we can power off the instrument, and switch the gases off, so obviously consuming no power or gas. And that's very similar to how you would operate an atomic absorption spectrometer. 
And then to start up from a complete shutdown, it's pretty much the reverse. So you switch on the power on the argon, light the plasma and allow it to stabilize for about 10 minutes. And then the system's ready for analysis. Now the next few slides, I'll discuss the analysis of copper gold ore. Now for any mine site, the analysis of the ore sample on a routine basis is critical because the plant operators need to know the concentrations before the ore is processed by the plant. So for a copper gold mine, some of the key elements that would need to be measured include obviously copper and gold, which are the primary base metal and precious metals in the ore. Silver is often measured as a, it's a secondary precious element that can be present in the ore. Arsenic is often analyzed because it causes problems in the processing of the ore and the concentrate and is a considered a penalty element. And iron and some other elements would be considered waste in the ore. Now, traditionally, flame AA could be used for this type of analysis. For example, Perkinoma has the pinnacle 500. However, the RBO 200 provides some benefits in terms of superior productivity for multi-element analysis and also better detection limits for some elements, in particular arsenic. So five certified reference materials were analysed for silver, arsenic, copper and iron following aqua digestion. And you can see in the table below, the silver and arsenic range from low ppm range, while the copper and iron were in the percentage level range. And these represented typical ore samples. And you also notice that gold wasn't analysed and that's because it's typically done by another technique, often by fire assay. So this is an example of a setup in a mining laboratory, the RBO 200 on the right hand side and the CTAC A6560 auto sampler on the left hand side. And you'll notice there's also a cover on the CTAC auto sampler and that's exhausted, that's going to exhaust. And that's important because you're dealing with concentrated acids, which can, which are corrosive and can damage the instruments. So with this setup, any of the fumes are being taken out of the laboratory. And the sample introduction consisted of a Gemco nebulizer, which is a robust peak construction, which is suited for these type of samples and a default glass cyclonic spray chamber. There is the option of a Scott Riton spray chamber if your samples contained, it, contained hydrofluoric acid. The sample preparation involved digesting an acroegia. So 0.4 grams of sample was weighed into a digestion tube. Nitric and hydrochloric acids were added. The samples are digested for one hour at 95 degrees Celsius and then allowed to cool and diluted to the 50 mil mark with deionized water. So this is the method details in the software. So the plasma conditions used were 10 litres per minute plasma gas flow, 0.6 litres per minute nebulizer gas flow, and 1500 watts RF power for robust plasma conditions. And the trace elements, arsenic and silver, measured in axial view, and for the high concentration copper and iron were measured in radial view. And one of the benefits of the high sensitivity on the RVO200 is that short read times can be used. So for this application, one second was used for copper and iron and a different read time, two seconds, slightly longer for the trace elements, silver and arsenic. And the total analysis time was less than two minutes per sample. And that included a 30 second wash between samples and two replicates. The calibration was performed using a four standards, multi-element calibration standards. 
ranging from low PPM for silver up into high PPM range for copper and iron. And a QC standard was analysed after the calibration and at the end of the sequence. So this is the calibration graphs, obtained excellent linearity with correlation coefficients greater than four nines for all elements with a curve fit linear three zero. This is an example spectrum for Aureus 5A4B. The grey bars represent the peak area that's being measured for each element. And the green crosses is the background correction points, which is being subtracted from the analyte signal. And you'll notice obviously for copper and iron, due to the high concentrations, we're seeing two large peaks. While for silver and arsenic, which are trace elements, the peaks are a lot smaller. And you'll also notice that there are some wavelengths or peaks adjacent to the analyte for arsenic and silver. And these are wavelengths primarily from the high iron and high copper that's in the sample matrix. And as part of the method of development, the green background correction points were optimized to avoid these potential spectral interferences. And this is the table summarizing the results. So the QC standard had a recovery of between 99 and 104%. And the certified reference materials recovered between 90 and 110 percent. And that included for the trace elements, silver and arsenic. So in summary, the RBO 200 for the analysis of copper gold ore provides a number of benefits, including accurate analysis of trace and major elements in a single run. High sample throughput, so less than two minutes per sample for the four elements, and lower operating costs due to the flat plate plasma and plasma shear, and the ability to completely shut down the instrument between analysis. Thank you for listening.